Thank you. On the cover of this magazine is a man's head, and his name is Robert Arneson. He is a ceramic sculptor. If you look at this picture that he has created, at first it looks really funny and it gets your attention. Um, but then if you know a little bit about the history of Robert Arneson, you might be able to figure out that he's not just trying to be funny, but he's also trying to give um, a commentary about some emotional things that are happening to him. All right? Uh, Robert Arneson has uh, or had uh, lung cancer. And if you look at this picture really closely, you'll see that, especially at the face, you'll see that there's a brown wrapping that kind of covers up his face. His, his, the actual color of his face is underneath. And then he has this um, darker kind of uh, shaded look to the outer part of his face that doesn't match his actual skin tone. Um, and what he's trying to say by that is that he, that was what he represented his illness by, is by that outer coating. Um, and, and you'll see that it looks like he's kind of having some trouble breathing. And so that, that is a commentary that he created to show the world kind of how he was dealing with his illness. He was inspired by um, Japanese sculptors, which is kind of interesting to me because we've been working with Japanese printmakers. So this Japanese warrior is one example of something that might have inspired. So here are some other sculptures of Robert Arneson's. Um, we've talked about uh, embracing limitations this semester. And one of the limitations Robert Arneson had was that he was not just an immediate sculptor. Like, he did not just take to ceramics and he was really good at it. He was actually more of a cartoonist. And his first, uh, actually his first ceramics class, he received a D. He was not, he was not by any means um, a talented sculptor at the very beginning. But as he continued, he got better and better. And his sense of humor and his ability to adjust and adapt was, was really huge in this. And most artists are really good at adjusting and adapting. This is a portrait of the artist losing his marbles, is what he called it. And what happened is he created this entire, that star somebody drew it on my sheet, not cool. Um, but this, this first piece blew up in the kiln. So it was his first piece, it took forever for him to create. And it exploded in the kiln and cracked all the way up. And then this part of the face blew out the eye and all kinds of stuff. So he created, um, he created a great title for this. He called it a, The Portrait of the Artist Losing His Marbles. And if you've ever spent a lot of time on something and it doesn't work out the way you want it to, it's really frustrating. So instead of just throwing it in the garbage can, he actually used it. And he showed kind of like how he could ha find humor in, in fault. Um, because, hey, we live on earth, right? This is not heaven. Everything's not going to be perfect. So a lot of the other pieces that he created, he has used humor to kind of express express a lot of um, his emotional quality. Remember we talked about him struggling with uh, cancer and lung cancer and being able to breathe correctly? Um, if you'll look, this one called Clown. Why, why do you think he would have like this clowning kind of outer surface and then inside you can see him struggling to breathe? Why would he do that? Yeah, he's trying to make it laughable. He's also, so he's poking fun at, at the disease so that it doesn't have control of it. Another thing is people who are really ill sometimes do this, especially small children do this. If they know they're really ill and their parents are there, they put on a happy face so that their parents aren't worried. Have you heard of that before? Yeah. So if you think about like, I know my father-in-law did. My children were in the room. He acted like he felt a lot better than he did so that they didn't get scared, right? So if you think about that now, looking at that face, now you see what that he's trying to show this outer part of himself plus what he's really feeling on the inside. So artists can show a lot of different things about, um, about just human experiences. Your ceramic piece has to, in some way, relate to a human experience. Now you could, I'm not saying it has to be this deep and dark, okay? Because, I mean, Robert Arneson even did a commentary on nuclear war and called it Holy Warhead. So his, just like struggle, is something that he's trying to show through humor as well, okay? So that's kind of some of the pictures that he does is he's, he talks about how he struggles with things. And we've talked about limitations throughout the um, nine weeks and we talked about um, Bill Hansen, 
Remember Phil Hansen who had the shake? As an artist, we reflect society. So you could talk about, and, and um, Greta did that, I think, with her print and talking about like um, the environment and working through some of that. So your piece could be that deep, or guess what? It could be this. Hey, I noticed the leaves are changing and they're beautiful, and I'm going to create a vase that has leaves that are changing. See? It just has to be a human experience, okay? In some way, you have to be able to talk about it and, and tell me why you were moved to do that. And two of his favorite artists are Pablo Picasso and Jackson Pollock. And if you've ever been down in the elementary in the kindergarten wing, and some of you may have created these, you may have seen a splatter painting done by kindergartners um, where we study Jackson Pollock. Jackson, one of the things we don't tell kindergartners is that Jackson Pollock was kind of um, a tormented soul. He was very depressed and had some moments of real darkness in his life. And one of the ways he dealt with that was to create action paintings that are splatter paintings. So what, um, what Robert Arneson did is he, he created this sculpture of Jackson Pollock and then splatter painted it just to show how he was dealing with those emotional things. Um, if you look at this picture of Picasso, knowing Picasso the way I know Picasso, Picasso was a very independent kind of guy who made things happen. And this picture of Picasso is Picasso scratching his own back. So if I say to you, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours, what does that really mean? You do something for me, I'll do something for you. So Picasso scratching his own back means what? He's doing stuff for himself to make sure that everything works out, right? He's very self... You can take it two different directions. Like, he could be very selfish, and he was, by the way. Um, or he could be helping himself and being very resourceful, which he was, by the way. So there's both of those things. So he's, he's telling both sides of Picasso that way. Okay, so we've got, we've got George Washington, who is green, and we've got Mona Lisa. Now, I'm you're going to learn a word here. You ready for it? Juxtapose. Juxtapose, it's, it's spelled like this. By the way, as you're talking, you're, vi you're being videotaped. Well, that, that's good. Just making sure you know. Oh, yeah. Okay, juxtapose. That's a cool word. Juxtapose, if you want to sound really super smart, juxtapose is a good word to use. Really, here's what it means. This is beside that and is being compared to it. You get it? So here the artist, Robert Arneson, has juxtaposed George Washington with the Mona Lisa. Why did he put them together? What connection is being made? Why did he juxtapose them? They're, okay, so he's, he's saying they're both very important. I would agree with that because I like money and I like the Mona Lisa. What was yours? What? What was your reasoning for juxtaposing those two? George Washington is green. Why is he green? Because he's angry. <laughs> there you go. So he represents oh, yeah, what? Money. So then why is he looking longingly at the Mona Lisa? Because, because it's worth, worth a lot of, right? lot of money. There you go. Do you get it? Why is it worth so much money? It's become kind of an iconic thing. Because when you think when when you see the Mona Lisa, you immediately think of art. Immediately. It's like an icon for art. 